Hello, today we're going to talk about the perpendicular bisector theorem. Let's draw a quick little picture as we're talking about it. It says, in a plane, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Let's pause right there. I want you to go ahead and draw the segment. And we're going to call it AB. And it says that we have the perpendicular bisector of that is going to be a line that's going straight through the center. So picture the center of the segment. So let's mark it with a mark on each side. And we've got this line that's going straight through it. And because it's perpendicular, we know that there's a right angle right here. Okay, now let's continue with the theorem. It says that there's a point that lies on it. So let's go ahead and put a point right here. We'll call it point C. And it says then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment, which means that the distance from A to C is the same as the distance from C to B. Let's go ahead and mark that with two little marks. And let's write a conclusion. So if CP is the perpendicular bisector, we'll use this little shortcut symbol, perpendicular bisector, of AB then CA equals CB oops all right let's look at the converse so converse is kind of the opposite it says that in a plane if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment so let's show what we're starting with this time this time we're starting with just a segment We'll call it AB again. And it says we have a point that's equal distance from the endpoints. And I might actually put it down here this time. We'll call this point D. And it says it's equal distance. So from here, and then from D to B, these distances are the same. OK, that's what we're given. And it says that if you have that situation, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So my picture is not exactly drawn the scale, and I can kind of tell already. But let's pretend that this was the center right here. And it says that D is going to automatically lie on the perpendicular bisector, which means that we'd have this going through like this. Oops, it's a little hard to draw since I'm a little bit off center from the beginning. But just pretend that this is the center. Sometimes in geometry, things just aren't quite drawn to scale, especially when you're just sketching it. And this has the right angle, like that. Okay, so the way we'd conclude this is we'd say if dA equals dB, then point D lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB, line segment AB. This is pretty sloppy here. Try to write a little bit more neatly. OK, now we're going to use this in a couple of examples. It says, find the measure of RS, explain your reasoning. So it looks like RS is what we're looking for. And notice that we do have a right angle right here. We have two equal sides, which means that this is a perpendicular bisector. And according to our theorem, if we have a point on a perpendicular bisector, then the distances are the same. So this distance is the same as this distance, which means we can find RS pretty easily, right? So RS has to be the same as SP, which is 6.8. All right, let's look at the next one. Find the measure of EG. OK. So this time we're given that these two sides are the same. They're both 24. And we're also given that this is a perpendicular. And we have the Converse theorem that says that if we have a point and it's equal distances from the endpoints of a segment, then it has to lie on the perpendicular bisector which means that this has to be a perpendicular bisector, 
which means that this side has to be the same as this side. So to get EG, we could say EG equals EF plus FG. And just notice that EF is now 9.5. FG is also 9.5. And when you add those together, you get 19. And that's your answer. All right, next we have find the measure of AD. Okay, this one's going to be a bit trickier. I see some variables in there. Let's just look at our situation. We've got a right angle. We have two equal sides that are being divided by that line, which means that we have a perpendicular bisector. This is the point on the perpendicular bisector, which means that this has to equal this. We could label it like that. And so, if those two things equal each other, then we can set up an equation. Actually, I'm going to start with the 5x. 5x equals 3x plus 14. And now, it may have been some time since you did this kind of math, but just remember that we want to get all of our variables over to one side. So if we have a 3x over here, we can actually subtract that, that whole cluster. It's essentially saying I have 3x's and I'm taking 3x's away, which means I have no x's left. You can do that as long as you do it to both sides. The number in front essentially says how many x's you have. So if you have 5x's and you take 3 of those away, you have 2x's left. And then the opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So we get x equals 7. So this isn't our final answer, though, because we're trying to find the measure of AD. And AD equals 5x. However, now that we know that x is 7, you can put that in right there. So we get 5 times 7 equals 35. And that is the measure of AD. All right, that's it for today. Talk to you later. Bye.